with an invocation. I invoke each of you, your energy, your creativity, your learning, your passion, and your compassion. We come together in exploration, speculation, and celebration of a unique practice. A practice which is a business, a technology, a science, a therapeutic, and an art. It is clinical, it is creative, and it is spiritual in nature. We have an incredibly interesting array of speakers this year. I would like to acknowledge them simply by naming them and have them raise their hand or stand or not. Uh, I have put them in arbitrary categories, but then each speaker fits all categories. Much like the float experience itself, all categories become fluid and interconnected. The first category are the wisdom keepers, breaking down dichotomies of past, present, and future. This is Lee, Glenn, Tom, and Jay. The next category are the change makers, breaking down dichotomies of inner and outer self and other. Aubrey, James, Kevin, David, Bertel, and Spencer. <laughs> the next category are the path makers, breaking down dichotomies of illness and wellness and creating new lines of inquiry. Doctors Loretta, Justin, Jeffrey, and Robert. And the next category are the makers, breaking down dichotomies between the creative, the efficient, the safe, and the qualitative. Rich, Bob, Nick, Pete, and Kirk. Thank you. <laughs> the float experience can pierce the filter between individual, culture, and nature. It is unique in its easeful entry into the theta state, or shall I say the undifferentiated state of creativity, or should I say the primal fluid state of consciousness, or the in-between state, where one is suspended in potential and in becoming. A mentor once told me, all thought and movement in duration should lead to opening. The float experience leads to opening. It leads to an exploration of death and can be a pathway to change. This is a very interesting and often joyous and very serious work we are doing. To be clear, in many ways we are in trouble. Environmentally, through environmental degradation and climate change. Biologically, through cultural and evolutionary short-sightedness. Psychologically, through a dynamic increase in stress, anxiety, and fear, and I relate to Justin's talk coming up. Economically, need I say more? Politically, through warring ideologies, and spiritually, through fundamentalist distrust and conflict, and the degradation of the sacred in the world. Even though they are explainable and unexplainable aspects of each other, these major systems are not deeply related to each other, to us, or to the planet, except possibly in practices like the flow. Experience. 
series, in which all are fluidly intertwined and which help create a pathway, or should I say a theta doorway, to reperceive ourselves, and thus, and thus to begin to reperceive and change these conundrums. In my talk at the end of the conference, we will explore this theta doorway and the in-between state which we enter in the float experience. As evidence philosophical, as the interstitial self and the self and world of becoming, ecologically as a rhizome and a wetlands, and often in the theta state as a wetlands of the weird. Theologically as the tehom and the chaosmos, the primal states of creation, as the plenum void of Buddhism and meditation, as the moment of complexity as the transitional phase or warp of consciousness, as an ecstatic experience, as a neo-shamanic experience and practice, in which one revitalizes the sacred as an element in the structure of consciousness, and as poetic, the use of poetic thinking to articulate the float experience, the nothing, something. My goal has been and will be the exploration of this in-between or liminal state. And in this, the float experience was a revelation. In the tank, one rapidly enters a fluid in-between state of potential and becoming. In this state, sensorium is suspended and thus cleanse, clearing our vision. This helps in the creation of an open-ended ethics, which helps ground uncertainty, <coughs> decrease one's egological concerns, and increase one's graceful and critical response to mechanisms of control. I would like to close with a quote from Houston Smith. History suggests that without a social vessel to hold the wine of revelation, it tends to dribble away. The next research question is, what conditions of community and practice best help people to hold on to what comes to them in those moments of revelation, converting it into abiding light in their own lives. Perhaps, just perhaps, that is why we are here, to help in the creation of such a vessel, of such a practice. Again, welcome, and thank you.